about lesson 20. This is Saxon, course 2. And the vocabulary that we need to talk about, it actually starts with talking about exponents. Now, it seems a little dark. We're going to turn a light on, maybe get a little light on the subject here. Don't know if that will help or not. We might even just turn down the light feature and see if that helps. Oh, that looks much better. That's much better. Alrighty. Exponents show repeated multiplication. And the base, which is another vocabulary word, is the number which is going to be multiplied. Now, I need to show you an example of that so that you understand what I'm talking about. Here's an example, okay? In this particular problem, 4 is the base. 3 is the exponent. The exponent shows how many times the base will be multiplied. The base is the number to be multiplied. Now, if you go ahead and operate on this like one normally would, okay, you would take 4 raised to the third power, or 4 cubed, would be 4 times 4 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16, and you would take that times 4 again, and you would get 64. Now, we can read exponents of, out loud. Okay, we can read these expressions with exponents. And they are called exponential expressions. So, you would have 4 to the second power, which you could say as 4 squared, or 4 to the second power. That would mean 4 to the second power is 4 times 4, which equals 16. Now, I know you guys know this stuff. I'm sure you've been exposed to powers before, but I just want to make sure that everybody knows it and not just a few people who happen to remember it. Now, these two are a little bit different. The top one says 2 to the third power, which we will either say as 2 raised to the third power, or we might just say 2 cubed. 2 cubed is a, a familiar phrase that some of you will remember. And that really means 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. Okay? You're not adding these together. It's not 2 times 3 which is 6. No, 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 no. It's 2 times 2, which is 4 times 2, which is 8. Now, this one's a little bit different with the fraction, and if you were to read it out loud, you would say the fraction 2 thirds raised to the second power. Or you might say the fraction 2 thirds squared. Now, here's a problem that actually has exponents and bases in it. This would be 4 squared minus 2 to the third power, or 2 cubed. Then you would go down here and actually do the math. You'd have 4 times 4, that's 4 squared, okay? And then 2 times 2 times 2 is 2 cubed. 4 times 4 is 16, 2 cubed is 8, 16 minus 8 is 8. Now, at times we are given an equation and we are asked to find the value of a missing base or an exponent. Okay, in this case we have 2 cubed times 2 cubed equals 2 to the n. n's our missing exponent. We don't know what n is. Well, if we go ahead and expand this a little bit, 2 cubed looks like this. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, because they're both 2 cubed. Well, let's just count. How many 2's have we got? 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and 3 plus 3 is 6. So it's actually 2 to the 6th power, if you combine all those together. Kind of an interesting concept. Okay, now you also can see a missing exponent in a division problem. And it, would, it might look like this. You have 2 to the 6th power divided by 2 to the 3rd power. Note this is also kind of in a fraction form. And remember we've always talked about that fractions are just really division problems. OK? 
okay, in disguise. So we have 2 to the 6, so that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 twos. And then we have 2 to the 3rd, 2 times 2 times 2. Now we don't have to go through and multiply all these out to solve this problem. We can simply get rid of the common numbers. We got a 2 on the top and a 2 on the bottom, so they cross each other out. And we have another 2 on the top and a 2 on the bottom. And we have a third 2 on the top and 2 on the bottom. We have nothing left on the bottom, but we are left with 3 2's on the top. So, our answer is going to be 2 to the 1, 2, 3 third power. Or, if you wanted to write it not in exponential form, it would just simply be 8. These are both the same. A lot of times you'll be asked to write the answer with or without an exponent. So if this is to be written without exponents, it's like this. If it's to be written with exponents, it's going to look like that. Okay. Special note should be in your notes. Okay. Sorry about that, folks. When we add or subtract values with same units or exponential power, the units or exponents do not change. For instance, okay, if we have 6x squared plus 2x squared, that's going to equal 8x squared. The square doesn't change when we're adding or subtracting. So we have an x squared here, we have an x squared here, and we're adding them. They're the same. It's bananas plus bananas. So 6 plus 2 is 8, and we leave it x squared. Okay? This one is a very similar problem. We have 10x to the cube, excuse me, 10x cubed minus 7x cubed equals 3x cubed. It stays the same because we're adding or subtracting. The only time it's going to change is if we are multiplying or dividing. Okay, and here's an example that's kind of neat to look at. When we multiply or divide with like units, the exponent will change. So it's opposite of addition and subtraction. So we have 7x times 2x equals 14x squared. Now why is that, you ask? Well, I would love to show you. It is because when we take 7x times 2x, it looks like this. 7 times x times 2 times x. I would use the commutative property to move the numbers and the, uh, and the uh, variables around. So now I have 7 times 2 times x times x. Okay, then I go ahead and multiply, which is my next step. 7 times 2 is 14, and I still have x times x. And we know that x times x is x squared. The answer is 14x squared. Not too bad. Really not too bad. Okay. Now, just like when we look for area of a figure, we're going to do something very similar that, that we just did in this, this last example. And that is going to be, we have a figure like this. We have 6, six times 3, which is how we find the area of a figure. So it's 6 feet times 3 feet. Same thing I did up, up there. It's 6 times feet times 3 times feet. Use the commutative property. We use this property so much to switch them around because it's multiplication. So now we have 6 times 3 times feet times feet. Well, 6 times 3 today is 18. So now we have 18 times feet times feet. And, of course, then we have 18 feet squared. That makes sense? That now explains why feet are squared. Okay, since we're talking about area, okay, we have a whole lot of things that we actually use area for in our everyday life and the perimeter as well. So, in our everyday life, we use it to carpet floors, paint walls, put tile on the floor, put vinyl on the floor to make window coverings, 
Um, if we want to fertilize our grass, we have to know how many square feet there are. If we're going to put shingles on a roof, we need to know how many bundles to buy, and bundles are purchased by square feet. Uh, for siding, we have to know how many square feet we have to cover with siding, so that's square feet. If we're going to paint the outside or inside of our house, we've got to know the square footage to be able to buy the paint, because the paint is purchased by square foot. Concrete, if you're going to put a sidewalk in, you've got to know how many square feet you're going to cover. Actually, concrete moves into cubic feet, but we'll, we won't go there right now, but we still need to know the area that we're going to cover. Uh, flower beds, if you're going to go buy dirt for a flower bed, you have to know how many square feet you're going to cover. Uh, perimeter is similar, but perimeter, of course, goes around the outside of things. A fence, if you're going to put up a border in your house on the wall. Gutters around the edge of your house. Baseboards in your house. If you're going to run cable or a phone jack in your room, you've got to know generally those go around the outside of the room. You don't go through the middle of the room. Um, computing area, you've got to know the dimensions of a room, which is the perimeter, the compute area. And if you want to know the distance from the floor to the ceiling for one reason or another, you have to know the perimeter. And you have to know the distance, uh, the height of the wall. We find area by multiplying the length times the width, which you already knew that. So let's take a look couple formulas. I know you have these in your notes. I know you do. Area of a rectangle, length times width. But notice I do this on graph paper just to illustrate that all of these boxes, okay, if I were to grid this off, okay, all of these boxes, if this was, this is actually I think 10 units by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units. If I were to go through and grid off all these boxes and then I actually go through and count all these boxes there would be 60 of them and that's the whole idea of the area is how many square units there are in a shape or a space um, this square is no different if I gridded off this if the side length is 3 3 times 3, 3 squared is 9 if you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, there are nine square units in that square. Kind of interesting concept. And of course, this goes with what I was just saying. Area is the number of square inches or square units needed to cover a figure. Okay, so let's use a strategy that works well and is often used in problem solving, especially when you're dealing with square units and squares. It's called working backwards. You're going to start with the answer and look for the question, basically. If we know the area of a certain square is 81 square inches, what is the length of its sides? All right. Well, what do we know? Well, we know that the square has 81 square inches. We know the formula to find the area of a square is S squared. Therefore, to find the area of a square, we take the length of a side and square it. That's S squared. Since the formula is S squared, we can say S squared is equal to 81. Correct? And therefore, we ask ourselves the question, what number squared equals 81? Hmm, I believe it is 9. 9 squared equals 81, therefore each side is 9 inches long. Another problem for us to solve. If a farmer has a field that has 144 square acres of corn, what are the dimensions of that field? Well, what do we know? We know his field is 144 square acres. And we know that it is, in this case, we are looking for a square field. Okay, it is a square field. Remember what we know, the formula for square area is S squared equals whatever it is. 
In this case, we know the area is 144 acres squared. We know the formula for the area is S squared. So we look at ourselves and go, what number multiplied by itself is going to equal 144? What number multiplied by itself is going to equal 144? Well, it doesn't take much for us to figure that out. It is 12 because 12 times 12 is 144. So this particular square field measures 12 acres by 12 acres. Kind of cool. Not really all that hard to figure out. Okay? Now, we've been talking about squares and we've been talking about what, what number squared equals something else. Well, we've been talking about inverse operations since the beginning of the year, and I want to add on to our inverse operation data bank here. Okay, these are the inverse operations we've been talking about. Addition and subtraction. Multiplication and division. And then we'll add one more, and it is squaring and square root. This right here is a symbol for the square root. Okay, and here are some examples. If I square 2, if I take 2 squared, it is 4. If I take the square root of 4, it is 2, because 2 times 2 equals 4. If I have 4 squared equals 16, I squared 4, I got 16. If I take the square root of 16, I'm going to get 4, because 4 times 4 is 16. It's the same with 81. 9 times 9 is 81. That's the square. Square root of 81 is 9. And 12 times 12 is 144. And the square root of 144 is 12. Wow, we got through that one. Sorry for a couple of the beeps in there. And fortunately, when I'm in, in school and I go ahead and... Um, record during school, I get some of the school sounds. So I hope this helped you a lot and we will talk to you later.